everybody welcome to the video my name is Crypt and this is a really quick video uh, I'm just gonna tell you guys that I have finally updated the AI series okay I have been busy this couple of weeks but here we have the tutorial okay so um, all you need to do is go to my discord server okay and then go to the AI text channel go to this text channel right here okay and you should be able to see this um, new change over here which was made today okay it says a which is step a okay tracking okay and then over here you guys can download this file so if you don't want to follow the tutorial you can just come over here and download the file leave your like and you're done with this video however if you want to know how everything's done i'm going to explain to you right now all right so if you see here is most likely because you want to know how everything is done okay so uh, let me explain to you real quick and this is actually very useful uh, for you to know because you can make changes to it so the main thing that was added was this targeting class right here okay uh, and this targeting class is this thread okay uh, and basically what this does is this is going to be the class that's going to take care of your movement so if you want to make any changes later on to your movement to your mouse movement okay this is what you need to do you need to make changes to this class specifically this method target loop okay inside of this method inside of this while loop while true loop you have this over here this conditional and over here you have win32 api we're currently using win32 api which is not very safe it's not the best method of moving your mouse however i'm just using it to show you guys how to move your mouse just for the tutorial purposes okay however if you want to know how to properly move your mouse safely you need to search up for something called you need to search up for one of these two things okay so once you search up for that, you need to understand how would you implement that into this code. Now, I made it so it's very easy for you to implement any of these two things into your code because personally, I actually use this code also, but I made it, I made changes to myself. I made changes to this code myself so that I have um, this, this um, um, Bezier curve into my code so it's more human-like, okay? My mouse is moved very human-like instead of just straight up moving to the target because right now your mouse is going to move straight up to the target, okay? But anyways... Basically, what happens is we have these four global variables over here now that's new. We have the running variable, which is communicated with the targeting class and the AI viewer. Basically, when the AI viewer is actually executing, right, then this class is going to begin um, working also, okay? This class only works if the AI viewer is executing, okay? So, as soon as the AI viewer opens, this class is going to work properly, okay? Or else it's just going to be um, looping. Okay, and then we have tracking bool. Tracking bool is important. Tracking bool basically is going to be um, how you turn on the AI, AI aim assist, okay? To turn on aim assist, you're going to go all the way to the bottom. And over here, you have um, the aim assist key, okay? And over here, you have the aim assist key. So it's going to be an input. So you're going to type in the name of weight like normal. You're going to type the exit key, the aim assist key, and if you have only one monitor. The aim assist key will turn on aim assist, just like common sense, right? When, when aim assist is on, Something's gonna show on your screen saying mouse tracking. Okay, I'm gonna show you that right now. So let's execute this program. So as you guys can see, follow line by line. Okay, this is the first function that's executed. So over here we have model name. So let's do that right now. Resources PUBG1. Okay, don't put the .pt. I have resources over here because that's the folder that it's on. I have exit key right here, so I'm gonna put the exit key at zero for me. If I press that key, the program is gonna exit out. Aim assist key for me is gonna be y only have one monitor you put y or n okay in my case i'm gonna put y i have two monitors but just so you guys can see and it's gonna execute the program and it's gonna be very small because you only have one monitor okay so it's gonna be oop it's gonna be very very small like this okay cool so that's how it works all right if you have, of course if you don't have only one monitor you can just put n and it's gonna be a bigger screen so you can actually see what's going on all right cool now um that's what happens now let's say you guys can't really see so let me actually restart this let me restart it and put that i have two monitors because right i want to show you guys something so exit key is zero aim assist is y only one monitor and it's gonna open a much bigger screen let's see <clears throat> there you go it's a much bigger screen now okay just like this and i'm gonna show you guys you guys see over here at the top left it says mouse tracking off. If you press Y, that's the key that I put on. It says mouse tracking on. Okay. So if you have mouse tracking on and it detects an enemy, it's going to move towards the enemy. Simple as that. If you want to turn off the application, press zero because that's the key that I put on. Okay.
Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Now let's say you have one monitor. Okay. And you wish to change how big it looks. Anyways, like you think for one monitor it looks too small. All you need to do is go over here to this line in 144. Okay, where it says resize image. Okay, inside of the AI view, inside of the run method, you have this over here. You're gonna change it to 600 by 600, for example. If you want it to be bigger, or 800 by 800, whatever you want. Okay, and it's gonna be a bigger screen. 500 by 500 is really small. Okay, uh, I'm gonna leave 500 by 500 just because that's the file that I'm gonna send to you guys. Okay, cool. Now let's say something else. So over here, oh, okay, so this is very important too. So in line 120, okay, inside of the AI view, inside of the run method, once again, in this for loop over here, you have these two things. These two things currently, the target X position and target Y position is basically where it's gonna target inside of the enemy. Like, is it gonna target the enemy's body, the enemy's head, the enemy's legs? So right now it's currently only gonna target the enemy neck, okay? And this is based on this over here. So if you wanna, like, let's say you wanna target the enemy's legs, right? You will change over this over here to like 2.1. Okay, and that's gonna charge, that's gonna, no, not 2.1, sorry, you're gonna change it like 4.7. That's gonna target the enemy's legs, okay, for example. I don't know why you wanna do that, but just in case, okay, if you wanna target the enemy head, you usually wanna leave it at 3 or 2.7, okay, just like that, okay. You can change these numbers, so it's up to you, all right. Um, target exposition, you never change that. Um, currently, also over here on line 119, okay. The confidence is 0.4, which means that the program is only gonna aim at a detection if he has at least 40% of confidence that that is actually an enemy, if that detection is an enemy, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? Uh, if you wanna decrease the confidence necessary to move the mouse, you can change over here to 0.2, so 20% of confidence to move the mouse. I like 0.4 to even 0.6 sometimes, it depends on how good the model is. If you have like, like a thousand images and your model is like really good like 0.98 uh map or like you know really good accuracy then you can change this to 0.6 this way you ensure that your mouse only moves when it has it, it actually sees an enemy okay but in my case because my model is very bad sometimes it sees an enemy but it does not move through it because the confidence is too high let's say to 0.6 so mine i changed to 0.4 of course, my PUBG model is bad because I did it with you guys. I did it quickly, but usually you want to have a good amount of images. If you want a good model, um, one of my one of my members sent a really good post. You guys should check out my Discord server. That basically tells you what you should do. This member right here sent a really good post. 12, he sent a really good post that tells you basically what you need to have a really nice AI. So he says over here that you should have um, around 1,500 or greater than greater than 1,500 uh, images per class, okay? So currently we only have one class, right? And uh, instances per class should have nearly 10,000 instances per class, which means labeled objects, okay? Um, this means that for each class, right? For each label you create, at least 1,500 images are recommended. Okay, so basically, it's just basically all you need to remember from this is always aim at having more than just 100 images. <laughs> 100 images is not a lot. Like you should try to make sure you have like plenty of images for each different scenario. Like I currently from one of my um one of my AIs for another game, I have like nearly like 1700 images and for me that's enough. Like 1700 Im images, that AI is is able to detect enemies even faster than I am to be honest sometimes. So um 1700 images is really good you should always aim for above a thousand images but 100 images is the minimum to get you going okay but thousand images is good 10,000 images is amazing if you get any, anywhere above 10,000 images you have probably a very good model okay uh it just takes time for you to get those images okay um all right so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you need to know um, for this program. Everything else we already talked about together. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you later.